In this video, we're going to talk about repurposing your content so that it's available on Kindle devices. But I want you to not just think about the Kindle as an individual device, because one of the things that's made the Kindle so popular is that the books that you purchase for your Kindle are actually available across a variety of devices. In fact, you don't even have to actually own a Kindle to buy and read Kindle books that you pick up from Amazon.com. Your audience can read Kindle content or eBooks that you publish there from a PC, from a Mac, from an Android phone, from iPads, from iPhones, from the Windows phones, from Blackberries, and uh, they're working on right now getting it out to the HP touchpads and the Blackberry playbooks, the little tablets that they're coming out with. So what's even cooler about that is that if you read a couple of pages on say your Mac, and then you go over to your iPhone and open up your Kindle app, it actually syncs what you've read on one device immediately to the next device. So you can pick up right where you left off between the two devices. And it's that kind of data portability between devices and the syncing that has made the Kindle format so incredibly popular. Just like we talked about repurposing your content so that it's available to suit different learning styles, repurposing your content so that it's available on multiple devices is such a powerful way to penetrate the market as a whole. And the Kindle has that capability, or the Kindle apps, the Kindle format has the capability of being available on so many different devices that it really helps you get into the marketplace. But just because Kindle formatted books purchased from Amazon are available on all those devices, uh, it doesn't mean that people are actually reading them or buying them. So let's look at some of the hard numbers about Kindle ebook sales. Uh, firstly, Amazon sold about 7.1 million Kindles in 2010, and they anticipate selling over 12 million Kindles in 2011. So that's that's a lot of Kindles. And you can see from the numbers, less in 2010, more in 2011, that it's growing from year to year. It hasn't flatlined yet, it's still a growth market. I think that sometimes since we're in the internet marketing niche and uh, we hear a lot about the different gadgets and stuff that are coming out, we might think that something's old news already, like, ah, the Kindle's old news, when in fact it's really just old to us because this is sort of what we do is, is mess around with gadgets and computers all day. But the world as a whole is still really growing into Kindle's and starting to adopt it, which is why we're still seeing growth in that marketplace. But since Kindle eBooks are available on multiple devices, just knowing that the Kindle itself is selling well is, is great news, sure, but it isn't the whole story. So in a press release issued in May of 2011, Amazon says that since April 1st, for every 100 print books sold on Amazon, it has sold 105 Kindle books. So Amazon is selling more Kindle eBooks, more Kindle formatted books than they are selling print books, which was their bread and butter. I mean, that's that's how they started off. So this format, this Kindle format is huge and people are picking it up. People are adopting it. Whether people are reading the Kindle books from an actual Kindle or they're using a Kindle app on an iPad or any other device, the market has adopted this format in mass and it's even surpassing those print book sales. This is incredible. These numbers are insane. Plus, it's still growing. Amazon also wrote in the same press release that they sold more than three times as many Kindle books so far in 2011 as they had during the same period in 2010. So let's put that in simpler terms. They've tripled their Kindle ebook sales between 2010 and 2011. I mean, this is, again, just a massive growing marketplace, and I can't imagine not wanting to be a part of it. Now, at the time that I'm filming this video, the free Kindle app for the iPad is at number 22 in the Apple App Store. It bounces around the top of the charts, but it's always up there somewhere. People are buying Kindle devices more than ever before, and people are buying Kindle formatted books more than ever before. And people are reading those Kindle books on all kinds of devices, including the Kindle itself, and the iPad, which, by the way, is expected to reach 23 million sales uh, in 2011. So let's talk about how you can repurpose your content to get it in a Kindle format so that you can open yourself up to that huge marketplace. Amazon calls their Kindle publishing di division Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing, and it's at KDP 
www.amazon.com. And you'll go to this page. It looks something like this. Uh, and they've got some FAQs for you if you need it, some forums if you have some specific questions. But let's log in and take a look at how we actually go about adding a book to the Kindle store. So you want to add a new title. And of course, when you create your account, they're gonna ask for some details from you about uh, you know, how you wanna receive payment for your royalties that you receive and that kind of thing. So of course, if you're new to this, go through that process. And then you'll have the opportunity here to add a new title. And let's walk through this. It's a pretty simple process and that it's actually really well documented. So there's uh, always the opportunity for you to get help if you need it. But let's walk through this process together and I'm gonna add a blog post that I created uh, and formatted for Kindle as a book here. Edition number is optional. Description, of course, include a good description of, of what your book is about so that people can find it. And then when they do find it on the Amazon page or the Kindle store page from the Kindle app, that they get an idea of exactly what it is that they may potentially be purchasing. And for the purposes of this video, I'm obviously not going to fill it all out because I don't want you to have to watch me type a whole bunch. But, you know, be be descriptive and tell people exactly what they're getting in your book. Consider it like a, like a mini sales letter. Then you want to add contributors. And if this is a project that you're doing with somebody else, you have the opportunity to add more than uh, one person, should you need to. But this was just by me and I'm the author. And you can, of course, select other contributors should you need to. Add the language, English, select a publication date. And the publisher can be your company or yourself. And if you have an ISBN, then you'll want to add that. And you probably don't, and that's fine. Uh, choose whether this is a domain, a work in the public domain or not, and mine is not. And then you want to select categories for your book. So I will do that in business. You can select two categories. So let's do something about marketing. E-commerce, that sounds good. Internet marketing, excellent. And entrepreneurship, those sound like relevant categories for my book. And then you want to put in keywords. And again, any of these things, just click on the little tooltips and they give you lots of good advice. But these uh, keywords should be comma separated. Internet marketing. Internet publishing. Oh, see, I put spaces in. Should be only commas. And hmm, online business. Now, upload a book cover. Uh, it is absolutely a good idea to do this, and I haven't prepared a cover for this book as, as this is just an example, uh, but you absolutely should if you can, and you can get some advice as to how to format that by clicking the, uh, the tooltip. So they want it in a JPEG or a TIFF, and here's the dimensions. So you can create a cover image for your book, and that's just because it makes, number one, it makes the book look a little bit more professional, but it's also something to catch people's eyes and go, oh, well, you know, that looks interesting. Now, do you want to enable digital rights management or not? Yeah, probably, because you don't necessarily want people to be able to uh, share the book without having purchased it. And then you want to browse for the book and I've picked the file on my computer. So let's talk about the formatting of these books and how you need to format a Kindle book. So we'll click on the Help with Formatting tab. And first, let's go over here to Types of Formats. So Kindle will let you publish in from .doc, from Word files, from EPUB files, from plain text files, from Moby Pocket files, from zipped HTML files, or from Adobe PDF. Now they do give some advice down here at the bottom that Adobe PDFs don't actually produce the best results and that they really seem to prefer overall that your file comes in a .doc format. 
Uh, so consider that. I did mine in Pages on the Mac and then did a Save As to save it as a dot .doc. But if you want to get into it, you can look into EPUB or if you're better with HTML, you can create your book in HTML, of course. Uh, and that will actually help with your being able to format because it does have some uh, tags that are supported in HTML. Uh, so pick the format that works best for you. Probably skip the PDF. Uh, I just use the dot .doc because that's the standard. That's the thing that just about everybody has. Then you click Upload Book. And then it will tell you that it's converting the book to Kindle format. And then you can click Save and Continue to move forward while it is doing the file conversion. So let's take a look at the formatting in, uh, in this case it's in Pages, but in Microsoft Word, uh, so that you can upload your book as a Kindle book. Uh, what they want is a title page with your book title and your byline. Uh, it's also a good idea to put in a copyright page, which I've done here. And also they want a page break between the two so that they appear on different pages. So you do that by just going to insert and then page break. And then next page, in my case, if it was a bigger book, I would want to include a table of contents. Uh, but for example purposes, we would then have our text and here's my text. And it goes on for a few pages and then that's the end. Now you can do a lot with the formatting of your Kindle book, of course. And you can go ahead and look in the Kindle book guidelines for more information on exactly what kind of tags they allow and how to go about formatting a document so that it will work in the Kindle format. Once so you've uploaded and you go to the next page, you want to say where it can be published or sold. And in this case, this is mine, and so I have the choice to do that, and there's no reason why I wouldn't want it to be available to everybody. So I'm going to select Worldwide. And the royalty options, if you want 70% royalty, you want to make more money, your book has to be of a higher price. So the starting price there is $2.99 for the 70% royalty. And if you want to do the 99 cent book, then you'll have to choose 35% royalty and your price can be between 99 cents and $200. Now, my goal with this is not to make a ton of money. My goal is to find the folks in the Kindle Marketplace who might be interested in my content. So I don't want to make my price something that would be a barrier to entry for these new potential audience members. So I'm gonna set my price at 99 cents. Now there may be a reason for you to price it higher. That may be because you have, a, a, it's a much larger or more comprehensive work that you've uploaded. It may be because you also have this work for sale uh, at another location, like perhaps in ClickBank and it's $27 there and you wanna sell it for you know $9.99 here. Uh, in which case you should really pick the 70% royalty so that you make a little bit more money. But you get the picture. If you have a compelling reason to price it higher, then sure, go ahead and do that. However, I don't want you to be pricing your stuff at $9.99 and wondering, wow, I'm not really getting anybody to buy this. I look at this much more as a opportunity to reach the Kindle audience as opposed to an opportunity to make a lot of money, at least for the purposes of this course. So keep that in mind when you think about your pricing. Do you want to choose Kindle book lending? It's up to you. I go ahead and allow it. And then you click save and publish, agree to the terms, and you're good to go. So that's the basics of getting your book up in the Kindle store. So depending on your niche, you could even make some money doing this and marketing your content on the, kid, on the Kindle and how to get more Kindle sales and that kind of thing would really be a whole nother course. So it's a little bit outside of the exact scope of always be shipping because what we're concentrating on right now is just making what you've got available to the vast audience that the Kindle has. It's just, it's just like having an app in the iPhone or iPad app store opens you up to the huge app buying audience that Apple has. Making your content available like this to the Kindle ebook buyers can bring you an entire audience of people who never knew, your exi knew that you existed. So consider getting your content up on the Kindle, and that might mean taking a few blog posts and combining them together into a small ebook type of format. It might be taking freebie ebooks that you have available that you've created as incentives for people to sign up to your list and making them available on the Kindle format, that kind of thing. But do think about getting your stuff on the Kindle because the audience is so vast and because the conversion process and the listing process is really pretty simple as you've seen in this video.